you could say change change really is about um, fixing the past. Uh, transformation is about creating the future. You could say change makes things better. Transformation makes things different. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Ngati CX. I'm your host, Aish, and today, folks, you're in for a treat. We have a digital business transformation expert with us on the show today. But before I introduce you to our guest, allow me to introduce you to the magic of Ngati. Ngati is the world's leading multilingual no-code chatbot platform, available across 14 channels with 35,000 bots. Created across 186 countries in every domain and use case, Ngati has been recognized as a top platform by Inc.com, TechWorld, CIO, and many others. We run the Ngati blog, video channel, and the Ngati CX podcast, receiving upwards of 400,000 visitors annually. And now for our guest, Paul Rigby is the owner of Paul Rigby Biz, where he helps organizations implement change, digital business transformation, innovation initiatives, and to overall improve employee engagement and leadership for better results. He works with senior leaders to ensure that they accomplish maximum value for their strategies. Since 2008, he has, sorry, since 2009, he has helped numerous organizations and senior leaders successfully implement change and innovation initiatives. And he dri- and he has improved ROI and dri- and has driven positive change by applying the learning from his interactive workshops. So, welcome to the show, Paul. We're thrilled to have you. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me. So, let me start off with our first question. Um, how should businesses implement digital transformation without any complication? Yeah, good question. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a difficult one, to be honest. Um, there will always be complications. So let's be let's be upfront with that one. Um, if anybody thinks that uh, transformation is easy, well, they're mistaken. Um, I think what you need to understand is there's a difference between digitization and digital business transformation. People think digital and digital business transformation are the same thing. So just to, um, maybe let's just clarify with that one first, because that sort of puts to bed some of the complications. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, di- digital is about, it's about the convergence of um, multiple technological innovations that enable connectivity. So really it's all about digital connectivity and how the technology helps us. So like I, I call my uh, my new book, uh, the B book version 2.0, I said, it's understanding digital business transformation. I could have taken the word digital out of it because digital is pervasive in everything we do today. Um, and that's why I decided to include it because the problem with the, 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 you know, how do you overcome the complications? As soon as you say digital, everybody thinks IT. <laughs> but it's got, you could argue it's got nothing to do with technology and everything to do with people. Mm-hmm. So, so what is digital business transformation? So if, if digital is about uh, multiple technology innovations enabled by connectivity, digital business transformation is about, it's about organizational change through, um, through digital technologies and business models to, to improve performance and add value. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that means you've got to get everybody on side. And I like to say digital business transformation is like change 2.0. You've got linear change, which which I talk about, and I think you need to understand that. And if you understand basic linear change, then I think that you'll be better positioned to transform. And the fact that it's got digital in the name is sort of irrelevant at at the end of the day because everything, like exactly what we're doing now, we were talking before this about Zooms and WebEx and Webinar Jams and, and Teams and whatever other platforms are out there. That's all digital. So, you know, it's just sort of taken for granted these days. Um, it, it's it's how you deliver value. It, it's how you deliver value to your partners and, and to your employees. And for me, I mean, this might sound, you know, some people may may disagree with me, but digital business transformation, it's a mindset thing. It, it's, it's, it's not, um, what can I say? It, it, it's not necessarily what it produces. Of course, it is about adding value, but it, it's, it's how you get this whole, call it an ecosystem, I hate word salad, but it's how you get everything to work together. And that's really what it's all about. You could say change Change really is about um, fixing the past. Uh, transformation is about creating the future. You could say change makes things better. Transformation makes things different. Mm-hmm. And the fact we've got digital in that, well, it's just speeding up. It's like what we're doing now. It's putting on an app. But people think, there's a thing I, I like to talk about is, are you doing digital or being digital? Putting up an app or having a website is doing digital, but being digital, it's, it's coming from here. It's coming from the heart. It's, it's your culture. It's the way you do things. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, you asked, um, how do you implement without any complications? Um, I don't believe that's possible. But I think the first thing you can do is, is to make sure you differentiate exactly what you're doing. And then you sit down and, and, and understand it. And with all due respect to senior leaders, many of them don't understand digital business transformation. So if you, the first step is to understand what you're doing. I hope that answers mm-hmm. the question. Yes. Um, so what are the types of what kind of challenges do businesses usually face besides the mindset? I think um, you mentioned an interesting point about how uh, it's kind of in the mindset, but what kind of challenges do businesses usually face? Far too many. <laughs> There's a next question. No, seriously. Uh, you know, the challenges you face is, is the first thing is you need to understand um, why do we need to transform? You know, that's these questions. I like to keep things simple. For, for those of uh, my clients that know me really well, I, I, every time I, you know, I've got five different workshops and I always started off the same way. I'm not about corporate world, word salad. I'm, I'm about telling people what it's in. There's too much complications and, and, uh, and stuff going on in the world and, and you've got to keep it simple. And, you know, as I say, um, simplicity is the ultimate form of, of uh, oh, I can't remember the quote. I'll come back to it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, simplicity is the ultimate uh, sophistication. Uh, why do we need to transform? That's the first thing. And that's a big question. And you can spend hours on that. Uh, what do we need to transform? And, and then, you know, how do we do it? Um, so, you know, the, these are some of the challenges. And the first thing we need to realize is that, is that we're in a world of hyper uncertainty and the old rules may no longer apply. Mm-hmm. Um, I did some work a couple of years back with a, a really famous dude who uh, originates from India, Vijay Govindarajan, uh, based in Tuck Business School. He was at the time in the, one of the top uh, three of the Thinkers 50. And one thing I learned from Vijay, um, and he specializes in, in innovation, and, and he says innovation is your most important strategy. He's got a three-box model, which I just love, and I think it applies to digital business transformation. You've got to, mm-hmm. you've got to manage the present, um, which is – managing, I suppose. You've got to forget the past, selectively get forget the past. So some of the old rules may long no longer apply. You've got to bring those with you. But if you bring the old rules, we get what we call a little performance engine. Your performance engine is what pays your money today. But what's gonna what's gonna be your performance engine tomorrow? And that's what transformation is. It's it's looking at at, at the changes. Yeah. And then you've got to as a as a as a transformation leader, as a an infinity leader, as Simon Sinek calls it, which I, I absolutely love, is looking for the future. It's, it's about keeping relevant. You've got to look at how are you going to design the future. And digital business transformation is about how you change your processes, your systems. It's not just about products and sexy apps and things like that. Digital business transformation is it's about changing your modus operandi. It's about changing the way you do business. Um, and that's, that's huge. Um, you know, you, you say, what are the challenges? Just, just think about that. You've got to change the way you're doing business. Massive challenge. And I hate to belabor the COVID thing, but I read a quote the other day about, you know, we've done, in 10 months, we've done what we did in 10 years. I would also mm-hmm. challenge, have you done it successfully? Are the people stressed out? How long will it last? Can you sustain it? Because from a lot of my clients, um, people are stressed out now. They've, they've been working damn hard at home. Um, I'm sure we'd all agree. And, you know, we were saying, just before we started this uh, this um, recording, how we like to get personal one on ones, and people aren't getting that. We're doing what we're doing right now, which also puts a bit of a strain on it. So um, the big challenge for me is once you've understood that, is getting the, the 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 CEO and the senior leadership team on board and and really understanding it and believing in it, because like with change, if they're not on board, nothing happens. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and then you've got some challenges about um, whose job is it. And the first thing people say is, oh, it's the IT guy's job, the CIO, whatever, you know, they always got an O after it, whatever O after. No, it's the CEO's job. Let me make this very clear. Digital business transformation is the CEO's job. And if, it, if you give it to a, a digital um, transformation officer, which I would highly recommend, that person should have a senior board appointment and should report into the CEO. Otherwise, you, you lose the kudos. Um, you know, what this is about is being fit for, for the future, and it's about being relevant. And you can't be relevant if you're not in digital. Whether you're a small business like myself, I've had to change all my workshops to go online in a very short space of time. And 
you know, I'm just a small, a small business compared to, to the large organizations. Um, it's, it's all about customer experience. So you've got to ask yourself, what do the customers want? What do they expect? Can we deliver? It's about being truthful. And I often say to people, it's a culture change. And people go, whoa, don't mention the word culture. It, it's, it's a culture change. It's about changing the way you do business. And it's about getting people to buy in. Mm-hmm. And so one of the other challenges I, I say is, and you know, none of the stuff you'll notice I'm talking about is technology per se, because it's all about the people. It's about communicating in an honest, crystal clear way. And we don't do enough communication. So, you know, I said to you, this is like change 2.0, but it's communication 2.0. It's everything 2.0. And I like to say it's about moving at the speed of business. But really, you've got to be moving faster than the speed of business to stay ahead of the game, if you get me. Um, mm-hmm. So it's um, some, some, I was talking to a client recently, they said, we don't really want to do the digital business transformation workshop. That can wait till, till later. And I'm going, um, if you look at my little my little bees up here, you know, who, if anybody can tell me that they're moving fast enough, I'd like to know who they are. Because <laughs> I don't think anybody is moving fast enough. You know, you, you've got to really, you've got to keep moving. Um, the other thing is digital business transformation. Just looking at the challenges is it's it's not about exploiting existing um, organizational competencies. It's about rapid growth and adoption. It's about learning fast. It's about it's about changing your mindset to accepting failure which we don't like Mm -hmm. um and so you know you are going to fail at something um and i take my hat off to to many organizations that have really pulled the rabbit out the hat but i'm sure they've they've done lots of failures and they've had to bypass a couple of the um necessary systems and processes but now we have to go back and fix those because in the short term people can they'll they'll bypass that because of the situation with COVID. But it's not going to last forever. And then people are going to start saying, but this keeps breaking. I'm not buying this. So I don't want to do business with you or things like that. And so the, the challenges are the culture, the structure, uh, the resources, budgets, understanding. It's about the people, um, losing motivation. And the big thing for me is collaboration. Mm-hmm. If you want to have a truly, if you want to um, do digital and not be digital, all the departments have to collaborate with one another. So, this, you know, the old, we've all got silos. Now you really do have to break down the silo mentality and disentangle the organization, get more flat structures. Um, the CEO has got to lead it. Um, you know, even I was reading an article recently with McKinsey and, and McKinsey said of their clients they deal with, most of the successful clients were the ones where, where the CEO was crystal clear on what he wanted to do. So you'd have your CEO, you'd have your CTO, and they'd have a little department and those people are basically collaborators. They're not the doers. They'll go out to various countries or departments or sites, and they would collaborate, and, and uh, they don't control. They don't do. But what they do is advise and keep people on the same track and align them, which is mm-hmm. really a tough challenge. As anyone will know in a corporate world, communication is one of the toughest things to do and keep it simple and make sure everybody gets it. Oh, definitely. I think communication is one of those, like, um, one of those critical drivers of a successful business transformation. Yeah. Well, um, I, I always like to use the four C's. Crystal, you could argue the third one is actually repeating itself, but it's crystal clear, customized communication. So if I'm talking to you, it's different. You know, you've got five different uh, generations in, in the workforce now. The way I talk to you would be quite different to the way I talk to your parents, as an example. Mm-hmm. Um, and, we, I, and I might want to get across the same point. Uh, you've got race, gender, and you, you know, you culture, you've got all these things. So you've got to customize your your message to make sure people truly understand it. And we don't. We go to a town hall, we give a blanket message, and we assume that everybody's got it, but only 30% of people get what you're saying first time. So you've got mm-hmm. to go back, repeat, 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 win over the naysayers, um, you know, get get the healthy skeptics on board, etc. So that's also, you know, it's it's a big challenge. Mm-hmm. So we've talked about uh, communication being a critical driver, but what else do you think are critical drivers of a successful business transformation? Yeah, I think um, it's about doing digital versus being digital. It's it's walking it's walking the talk. Too many companies are are doing digital, not enough are being digital. Which goes back to my previous um, the previous things I was talking about is is about changing the culture, about getting people to really understand what they're doing. Um, you know, in, in my workshop, I really hammer this. And you know, I say to them, um, what is it we want to achieve? 
Why are we doing this? Just We're not doing it because everybody else is doing it. We need to achieve something. How is it adding v- uh, value? Why, why must we transform? And then I, I hold it and I let people just go. We write down a whole lot of things. You know, how do we get there? What do we need to do? Who do we need? Uh, it's, about, it's about employing the, the right type of people as well. So, you know, you, you, you got to look at it from a practical point of view, first of all. Um, the CEO, the, the senior leadership, they may understand some of the things. But, for example, if, if, I was, if I was working for you, you would employ me for certain skills. So, you got to stop micromanaging and allow me to do those things. Mm-hmm. Um, the critical success driver, which is quite tough, is, is test small, uh, test fast, learn fast, scale fast. So, basically, it's learning first, profit second. Now, you go and tell your chairman and board of directors that. They're not going to be too happy, but that's really what it's all about. Test mm-hmm. small, test fast, learn fast, uh, scale fast. And you've got to make sure you give some some resources and budget, and that's why I say that the senior team have got to come on board. Um, don't talk with a corporate word salad. Keep it really simple and say, this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. Um, and I, I just cannot emphasize this enough. that The senior leadership team have got to be on board this 100%. Because mm-hmm. if you've got uh, dissension in the ranks and people going out the door and going in different ways, you know, a, a bridge is built from two sides. Huh? And so you've got to make sure all sides are on board to build the bridge. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so, you know, I think you need to, to ask, uh, what is it you want to achieve? That's exactly. a very good point. That, that's really what it's all about. So what would you define as the ideal framework for a digital business transformation? I wish I knew the answer because I think, I think there's some generic frameworks you can use. And I Mm -hmm. think it depends where you are in your transformation journey. And I think it depends on this type of people that you have working for you and the expertise they have and your culture, et cetera. But essentially I think you've got to understand, you can start with, you know, this is sort of really about the ideal strategy you're going to use. And it's really about whether you're in change or whether you're in transformation. And you need to you need to really sit down and just have a look where your business is. Because um, now this will be quite controversial. Um, or maybe not. You need, I don't believe you need a digital – I mean, I know I'm going to contradict myself. I don't believe you need a digital strategy. You go, ah, yes, you need a digital strategy. Where I'm coming from, just let me finish. What if your digital strategy is different to your corporate strategy? Mm -hmm. Uh, What I'm saying is at a a, a high level, you shouldn't have a digital strategy. You should have a corporate strategy of which digital is part of that strategy. That's what I mean. You get me? Mm -hmm. But if you just have a digital strategy, what if it's different to your corporate strategy? Then you've got Mm -hmm. a problem. So your digital strategy is actually part of your corporate strategy. It's like you don't. You don't have an electricity strategy. <laughs> you know, digital is just part of the way we do business. And that's where I'd like people to get to. We don't. So that's why I say to you, of course, we're going to have a digital strategy until we get there. Right. When you first had electricity, they probably had a, an electricity strategy. In fact, you could argue some people do. They want to go with solar power or whatever it is and save. But it's it now it almost becomes a tactic. Digital is <laughs> pervasive. So I just challenge, do you really need a digital strategy right now? Yes, but in the future, very sh- uh, soon future, I'd say uh, no, not as a standalone strategy, but as part of a of an overall company strategy. Does, mm-hmm. does that make sense? Yeah, it's uh, all about the integration of it. <laughs> correct. Right? And, and, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, do you have a mobile phone strategy? <laughs> I, I, I launched mobile phones uh, in my youth, and you know we had two phones. It was a Motorola and a Nokia. <laughs> and the people would say, you, you need to have a, a, a phone strategy, but soon it just became the way we do business, right? Mm-hmm. And the rest is history, okay? Uh, I'm showing my age now. Um, <laughs> and then you need to define your objectives. You know, what are your objectives? So, so you know, what is the ideal framework? I, I clearly, I, I can't say there's one ideal framework, but I'd say work out how does your digital strategy fit into your overall strategy, work out your um, your objectives. And the objectives are based around, um, I, I guess, three things are, are customer value creation, um, what type of business model you're going to use. And there's lots of those, cost value, experience value, et cetera. That's a whole exercise on its own. And then what strategy? So your strategies are, typically you have four strategies. If you've ever seen a strategy box, uh, let me get my brain working here. It's 
re- retreat strategy where you withdraw your business um, and your revenues dry up. It's occupy strategy where um, you win over competition with um, from a new market. It's a harvest strategy um, where you block disruptive threats. And then it's a disruptive uh, strategy where you, you own the business and you just go in like crazy. And I think if you look at it, most people use a harvest a harvest and an occupy strategy. So you'd have to decide, you know, what what are you doing with, with those two things? And then here's the crux for me. Um, you know, you ask, is there a, a good framework? So what I do in my workshops is we, we discuss all these strategies and then people decide, right, these are the strategies you're going to use. And then I say, right, what is your digital business transformation ambition? So I want you to write an ambition statement. And this is not a vision statement. You've got your company vision, values, mission, et cetera. Um, it, it's, it's focused on, 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 the, on the competitive state. It's, it's what does this company want to become? So it's linked in with the, with, the, uh, with the vision, but it's saying, what will our future state be? So let me give you an example, which I stole from Cisco, and I unashamedly stole it from Cisco, and I put it <laughs> in my book, uh, in my B book, as an example with the Bs. You know, in the, in 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 uh, in my little B books, I, I use them as uh, you know, these these little these little books. I use them to help get a common language in the workshops to keep things simple. So in in the B book too, um, their digital um, um, ambition statement is seventy thirty five. Okay, in five years time, seventy percent of their business should be derived from new digital technologies and digital business transformation initiatives. Thirty mm. percent will be from existing customers and 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 may or may not include digital business transformation. So uh, we call it the seventy thirty five, and then every leader should be able to clearly explain that mm. um, and 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 understand what that means. And everything, all the meetings you have from now on, everything should be focused on that seventy thirty five. And I just love that because it's it's really simple, and people can grasp exactly what's going on in that. Right. Um, so um. So that's really what I, I think you need to do for, um, you know, for 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 your your, your challenges you're gonna you're, you're gonna overcome is is define your objectives, define your your business model, um, and then you've got a good framework and start with your digital business ambition statement, because then from there everything else flows. You know, mm-hmm. why are we doing this? Seventy thirty five. Everybody gets it, right? This meeting's all about X Y Z. Changing this process, changing this procedure, looking for new clients. We've got to, we've got to change our CRM, uh, whatever it is. We've got to employ new new employees. All of this takes. Are we going to uh, take time and, and and thought? Are we going to train our new new people? I mean, people say digital business transformation is going to be less jobs, but I read recently Amazon em- employed three hundred thousand bots in their um, in their warehouse mm-hmm. and two hundred thousand people. So oh two thousand people around the world weren't employed before, but mm-hmm. you know you can't teach an old dog new tricks. You've heard that expression, unless the yeah. dog wants to learn the new tricks. Welcome to the new world. We've got to become learning maniacs, as I call it. You've got to mm-hmm. keep keep learning, and if you don't, then yes, you probably will be out of a job. I'm sorry to say, but that's mm-hmm. your decision. Um, you know, I just look at myself, and I often tell my clients, I probably have more books during lockdown, but in the mm-hmm. last sort of eleven years than I did at, at university. You know. Um, I'm always reading. I, I've read about 30 books during lockdown. I've I've written a new workshop. I wrote the new book. Well, it was already in the in the in the plan. But um, you've got to keep learning. You've got mm-hmm. to keep learning. And if you don't, then you can't really moan. But digital business transformation is not necessarily about technology per se. I keep repeating this. It's about how you adapt, how you get people on board. You could go into become a communications expert. You know, it, it's the, the opportunities are endless. It's it's, mm-hmm. it's, really, um, it's really exciting. It is really exciting. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. And listen, if you can, but if you can teach a dog new tricks, then you might as well get a puppy, you know. <laughs> and that, it, and you see, so people my age are saying, "Oh, all the young guys have got the jobs. What are we going to do?" And I'm saying, relearn, unlearn, if that's really, unlearn and relearn, or selectively forget the past and adapt. And that's exactly what I've tried to do to the best of my ability. Mm-hmm. I think that's a common thing about lockdown i mean like a common theme i would guess because um right now a lot of people have been saying that necessity the necessity is the mother of event, invention and right. a lot of people have been unlearning and relearning new strategies because i that's what the situation calls for right yeah and and also don't forget you know you can you can learn from the people 
in, in my age category, uh, can learn from the younger people. So you get what, you know, it's a typical thing is the reverse mentoring, you know, mm-hmm. things like, um, how do I better use LinkedIn to keep it really simple, right? But it's not just about that. It's about lots of other things. You know, I can teach you a lot of things and you can teach me a lot of things. And I think if you mm-hmm. change your mindset, and that's what I said, digital business transformation is a mindset thing. It's not a young thing. It's not an old thing. It's a thing. It's mm-hmm. here. And it's not going to get any slower. And it's not going to go away. So mm-hmm. adapt it, much like a phone. You know, <laughs> I launched one of the first phones in the world and uh, that used to pull the aerial out if you and used to open up the Oh, my goodness. I remember that. <laughs> Oh my God, am I giving my age away now? Yeah. <laughs> I, look, I look really good for 95. Eh? Um, <laughs> and, you know, you look at you look at it now, uh, the power of, of, of your Apple, Samsung, whatever, Sony, whatever phone you're using, it's just incredible. And it's not going to get any slower. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, look at your, look at your computers. Um, so, so digital business transformation, as I, as I always say to people, get a grip of it because it's not going away fast. In fact, it's just gonna. It's just gonna get faster and faster and faster. And um, you know, if if you don't like transformation and change, then you're gonna like irrelevance even more. Mm-hmm. So um, that's it. As you mentioned, it is kind of going faster faster than the speed of business. <laughs> faster than the speed of life, let alone <laughs> business. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, in, in uh, where was it? in Singapore, I saw on the news last night. They've already. I've been reading about it for a few years. They've already got uh, air taxis. They look like mm-hmm. big drones. And I was watching on. Uh, I was watching the BBC for my sins, um, and uh, they they they've really started doing pilots on that. So you know, it's it's getting interesting. Mm, definitely. Getting interesting. Yeah. So, are there any other um, final thoughts you'd like to share with our audience? Well, I think. Um, what you've got to do is you've got to think about how you measure all this. Mm-hmm. You know, what doesn't get measured doesn't get done. Um, and this is quite a, a good exercise. Towards the, So what I do is in a workshop, I'll, I'll, I'll have talked about all this and we'll have done the digital ambition statement. And um, then we I, right at the end, I, I say, right, now how are we going to measure this? And we take – it's quite a tough one because, um, you know, you need to look at your digital proficiency. You need to look at your customer focus. So what do you measure? Do you measure things like net promoter scores, um, customer churn, things like this. Um, you've got to look at the return on innovation. Um, how mm-hmm. many new products or services or or processes do you bring to market or or, or adapt or, or or change? Um, so I think you need to look at how you measure this. Um, here's a controversial thing: stop giving bonuses uh, oh, and pay people, pay people properly. And then you get what we call uh, engagement 3.0, where people want to make a difference. Mm-hmm. Um, because bonuses is motivation 2.0. If you do this, then I'll give you that. Or you combine the two. And really where you've got to be aiming at is motivation 3.0. You pay people enough money that, that they really do this stuff. And they, and they look and, the, and they take responsibility for, for implementing this. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't pay bonuses. I'm like, <laughs> I love bonuses. I don't get those anymore. <laughs> you get my point. Just people should do it because mm-hmm. they want to do it. And uh, and they'll come up with ways of measuring it. They're not worried about ways. Where I'm coming from really is they're not looking at manipulating the measurement to affect their bonus. And that's a tough one to do. Um, then you've got to have what we call a plan B. In the B book, I'll give you a spoiler. There's no end chapter because I wrote the books to support the workshops. So we complete the plan B in the workshop. So we write... The, the, the final chapter in the workshop based on the learnings and based on the company that I'm dealing with. And it's a high level plan, but it, it gives them something to implement. And so what I say to mm-hmm. people is, um, you know, let's make a plan B, but always plan for the fact that no plan goes according to plan. So we have a plan <laughs> C, D, E, and that's what transformation really is about. Plan, plan B, you could argue is change and plan C, D, and E is transformation. And they're going to change because it's not a, a straight line. It's, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so um, I think I think the other the other so you know have different plans and and understand you are going to fail. Um, allow allow for a culture of failure. I'm not talking about massive failures, but you've got to learn. You've got to keep a hypothesis of record. You've got to learn from your failures and understand there's probably going to be more failures than successes. But what we tend to do in the business world, we focus on the successes. We've also got to create a safe environment to allow people to fail within reason, of course. Um, mm-hmm. And then I'll say, you know, um, 
if you want them to be successful, allow them to take the leap. So it comes back to allowing a safe environment and don't just hammer them, support them. And I'll just reemphasize the biggest thing for me is the senior leadership have got to be on board to support the people that are actually going to be physically doing the work. And that's mm-hmm. how you get a culture of, of being digital, no pun intended, be, you know, be, yeah, <laughs> being, being digital um, as opposed to doing digital because doing digital is just going through tick box exercises. Um, right. So the big thing for me, final thing is just get your culture right, get people motivated to want to change, which is what it's all about. Have short-term mm-hmm. wins and, um, and give them the tools, resources, and budgets that they need and make sure that the people at the top are 100% on board. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. Those are some really helpful tips. Thank you so much, Paul. Um, you. And thanks for giving us your time. Your insights were really valuable. And I know our audience is really going to enjoy this interview. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be back with a new episode with a brand new expert soon. So stay tuned and we'll see you around for the next one. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.